Oh, here we are again, folks. What a day. And it's good to be with you again today. In the country where I live and where I am right now, in the state I'm in, we've got a rain. And um, there's two ways to look at a rain. One way we look at it is say, wow, uh, little Johnny can't go out and play today. It's raining. But <laughs> I remember when I was a little, we'd go visit my grandmother. And my grandmother let us put on a pair of shorts, me and my, my brothers, my sister, and whatever. We'd put on some lightweight clothes. It'd be a thunderstorm. It'd be lightning and raining. And, and we'd go out and play. And Mama would come, come home, and Grammy had been taking care of us, and Mama come home, she'd have a fit. Uh, we were out there playing in that lightning, and she'd say, Don't you know, Mama, these kids are going to get hit by lightning? She said, Oh, we did it all our life, and ain't going to hurt them. And so, here we are today, still alive. But here it is raining. Now, there's two ways to look at it. One way is, right now, I am saying, Thank you, Lord, for the answer to prayer. Right now where we live, we need the rain. We don't really need a diluge two feet at one time, but we do need this steady, even rain like we've got. I've got a farmer friend that I'm uh, diligently praying for that God would make his pastures green. He needs his milk cows to give milk, good milk. And the only way they're going to give good milk is they're going to have to have some good hay. And he can't afford to feed them. You feed them, and, and the cost is outweighs the milk and the time and everything else. So here we are in a nice, even, steady, long-term rain. It's been raining now probably, I don't know, 12, 14 hours steady, and which is a nice thing. And it's going to let up about dinner time, they say, today, and move out. And uh, But God has uh, gave us a blessing in this area to give us some rain on the fields for the animals and <clears throat> if you don't take care of the animals you and I won't have anything it's a funny thing we live in a day to day where uh, lots of people don't realize how important that cow is when you get that cow extinct you're going to have milk extinct and you say well we can get powdered milk well powdered milk is made from milk and dried and whatever so uh, just remember you do away with that milk and you're in trouble every country on this earth has depended on milk we, we in America haven't been as stewardess as some countries some countries they carry their cow with them they carry their sheep with them they carry their goats with them they carry the animals that would yield not only meat when meat was needed but they could milk them on a daily basis and they could curd that milk and make cottage cheese and they could uh, um, uh, pump that milk in a churn and, and make it into uh, different things and uh, uh, different kinds of uh, edible stuff and, and make, make it to where it would keep. It would actually, they could ball it up and put it in the earth and keep it. And uh, they were much more stewardess than we are today in the olden days but we're going to be in the Bible and as we're in the Bible you say well the Bible's an old book well the Bible's from eternity and it and to God nothing is old and to God nothing is old everything is fresh as new with God uh, time was for man and man was for time and because we are in time we just live short spans nowadays very few people live over a hundred nowadays, and by the time they're <coughs> they are a hundred, <coughs> many people aren't usable at a hundred. They have been uh, invalids from the time they were seventy or, or so because of the way of life, the mannerism of life. If you don't live your mannerism of life according to what God would have you live it, you're killing yourself, puffing cigarettes. Uh, drinking these uh, Red Bulls, I have had over the years young men uh, that worked for me that drank Red Bulls all day long. Those young men today, they are now 30, 35 years old and they look like they're 60. They're ailing all over, they got problems all over, their bodies have been uh, deprived of proper nourishment 
and uh, they've smoked cigarettes in their lungs and they've, they've dipped snuff and now they find out they've got uh, some kind of cancer and you cannot treat your body like the devil would have you treat it. Now see the devil would have you treat it that way. He would have you be rendered useless. <clears throat> That's his will. Look in Genesis 1.1 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Wow. This is the God of heaven. And He created man. And when He created man, He created him perfect out of the dust of the ground. And what God did was perfect. And the devil came along and stirred that up. Let's look at this Genesis 1 1. Let's take a Bible and open it up. And I can't do that. <coughs> I can't use that one. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, let's see if I've got one right handy here. We've got Bibles everywhere here. i got to find the right one. I use uh, uh, many different Bibles uh, to study in. And. Uh, this, uh, the, I only quote, I try to only quote from uh, the, uh, the King James Version. It said, in the beginning, in the beginning. What, the, what is that? The beginning. That's the very first thought of God on, for this earth. God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. <clears throat> where is your problem? If you have a problem with the Bible, where is your problem? Uh, you think a spark, two, two planets hit together up there in the sky, and a speck of dust whirled around for a million years and became this earth? You're dead up here, and you're dead in here and don't know it, if you believe that. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters from the waters. Uh, uh, which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament... Let's fix this Bible. This Bible's kind of been through the ringer and it's a little bit tore up and God made the firmament divide the waters from the water from beneath and God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day and God said let the waters under the heaven be gathered together under one place and let the dry land appear and it was so and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, his kind. Whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Let's stop at verse 12 a second. And note what God says. He says he made everything after its own kind. Without touching it. Without fooling with it without genetics today, without what man is doing today. <coughs> man has made corn can, that can grow so fast and so beautiful 
and even some tasty uh, that man thinks he has really engineered something, but he has engineered the goodness out of it. God designed it to grow the way it was designed to grow. God designed it so that it would preserve itself. Corn preserves itself. Here it is on the stalk, and uh, it can hang there until it dries. And after it dries, it can be uh, reaped. You can go reap it after it's dry and pull those dry kernels of corn <coughs> and rake them off the shut. Re-put re them in water. Soak them in water and boil them and you've got good edible corn. Otherwise you can grind that dry, uh, those dry kernels into grain and then you have corn meal. And you can make corn flour. You can make all kinds of things that are life-sustaining out of that corn. It has the ability. We see the American Indians uh, knew about corn. We see that people over in other countries knew about corn. They knew about wheat, how you could grow wheat and it would flourish. And, and when it dried, you could, you could store it. When I went to Israel in 72, 73, went to Israel, went to Egypt. And we looked at grain in Egypt in the pyramids. They had it literally had grain that could be eaten. And from back in the pyramid days, grain will keep, if you keep it in a proper setting, it will keep uh, permanently. And, uh, you can, and you can take and reuse it, eat it, corn, same way. You can do corn the same way. If you keep it uh, free from moisture, keep it in the right, right temperature, keep it right, it will keep. God made a way to sustain food on this planet for animals and human beings. And he made that way. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Verse 14 is one of the most important verses in the whole realm of creation. That he set these two lights in the sky. Nobody, but nobody, but nobody can tell you today how the moon controls the seas. And it does. And how the heavens control the weather. And how the heavens control the earth all over the signs and for seasons look and they divide the day from the night as this earth turns it turns so that these seasons work day from night and let them be for seasons and for seasons and for days and for years now here's the sun coming up going down coming up going down coming up going down coming up going down the moon coming up going down each one of those lights in heaven do beside what they do, they control things. You say, I wonder how can the moon, it could, if there was no sun, would there be a moon? No, there wouldn't. The sun's what makes the moon shine. If the sun wasn't shining, the moon would not shine. And I'm not talking about the kind you drink. I'm talking about the kind that you see. And this moon causes it so that we can go out if you're a night hunter, a coon hunter, or animals that are not turned have to have that little bit of light from the moon, a little bit of light from the stars, so that their nocturnalism will work. And verse 15, And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, and the great light to rule the day the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that hath life and the fowls that may fly 
over the earth in the <clears throat> open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Did you know the Bible was not made for you and I to debate over? It was not made for you and I to argue over? It was not made for us to uh, uh, fraternize over? It was made for us to read, ask God for understanding, and that we may live by it. <clears throat> now, we see right here that God made whales. Wow. Uh, to the average person, that wouldn't mean too much. To the person who is a Bible studier and a person who uh, fraternizes with other people who are Bible studiers, we find people who like to plague the Bible and say, well, that was only a great fish that swallowed Jonah. Well, that great fish was a whale. Jesus said that in the New Testament. And some people who have never read about the creation, say, there weren't no whales back when Jonah was. Yeah, there was. God said he made them whales in the sea. One of the first things he did. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let fowls multiply in the earth. Wow. God made fowls and he made fish. He didn't make fish turn into fowls. And he didn't make fowls turn into fish. Uh, evolution is tore completely down when you read what God did. Now you can either do one or two things. You can believe what God said, end up going to heaven. You can believe what evolution said, and end up going to hell. Now just about everything in our school systems today base their theology on what man thinks not what God said and they, they take this little speck amoeba thing and say that it turned into all that we see how foolish can you be and the evening and the morning were the fifth day and God said let the earth bring forth living creatures after his kind cattle creeping things beasts of the earth after his kind and it was so. You say, why would God make lions and tigers and beasts of the earth to keep it regulated? These were regulated. These were thermostats, if you please. He set a thermostat on the sun so it doesn't give you over and burn you up. He set a, a, a degree in it, and he put it out here that you and I can live in it, so things can grow by it. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. All you have to do is believe what God said, and you won't have to fight the rigors of uh, this, this modern day thinking that everything uh, evolved. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Do you know what's amazing? What's amazing? With a computer of today, that man thinks is as smart as God, and it's not, but it is smart, you can put the human body from the top of the hair to the bottom of the feet in the computer and it would take you six weeks to read what it says about the human body and you think it evolved there's something loose up here if you think that uh, God made the beast everything after its own kind cattle after its kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and God saw it was good and God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness <clears throat> and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing 
that creepeth upon the earth. Now man was given dominion in verse 26 over everything. So God created man in his own image. Wow. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me. And every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Wow, has God made this whole earth all the way around, and it is the Garden of Eden, was the Garden of Eden. It was the most beautiful, the most perfect specimen that could possibly be, untouched by mankind, untouched at that point by the devil. It was the perfect, absolute perfect creation uh, before the devil touched it. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day. God blessed the seventh day from his work he had made. And God blessed the seventh day sanctified it because in it he had rested from all his work with the great God created and made. These are the generation of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day <clears throat> that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every planet of the, every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there... He put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made he the Lord grow, God, grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of, of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which encompasseth the whole land of Hevla, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is bedlam and onyx and stone, onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gion. And the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia and the name of the third river is Hydeco that is which goeth toward the east of Assyria and the fourth river is the Euphrates and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. 
And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to all the fowls of the air, and to every beast of the field. For Adam there was not found an helpmate for him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, God took one of Adam's ribs, and closed it up, and the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be of one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Wow. <clears throat> this was the perfection of God. How this would end all of the problems people are having today through uh, thinking about evolution. Uh, evolution has caused great problems on this earth. Uh, to just think that this finite body, not just this one, but think of all of the finite bodies of all of the amoebas, the animals, the fish, and everything in the sea uh, that is, to think that it came all the way back. I got a, a, a world book here from way back in 56 where uh, somebody made this chart of this little speck. And this little speck grew all the way up, all the way up into a flying elephant. Ah, oh, my goodness gracious sakes alive. Any human mind, even one that has <coughs> uh, been impaired, <laughs> could see through that, that it couldn't be factual. Any more than I could walk out here and spit on the ground, and tomorrow morning I'd have an elephant standing there where I spit. Uh, listen. Be careful. The devil is out to beguile everybody. Chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, right, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. I don't recall God saying, Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The devil, the presence of the devil caused the first woman to tell a lie, to add to. Adding to something is it's not known, a known fact is to stretch the truth or tell a lie. And the serpent said unto the woman, <coughs> Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and here she is looking at it, it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Wow. Verse 7 was the completion of the fall of man. Man fell with that one bite of that one evil food and has fallen more and more ever since, has continually fallen. Wow. You know where 
pedophiles come from? They come from kids looking at stuff they're not supposed to look at. <coughs> they come from the devil tempting them with trees they're not supposed to see. And then <coughs> when they, uh, another, a grown person who has ate from the tree he wasn't supposed to eat, touches that child and brings that child around and opens his eyes to what's on that tree. And then we have another problem. And then it continues, it continues, it continues, it continues, it continues. That's why we are deprived. We are a deprived nation. We are a deprived world. I should say we are depraved. We are a depraved world today. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together together and made themselves aprons. <clears throat> and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? And verse 10, And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Because I was naked. Wow. And I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, That woman whom thou gavest me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is it this thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Wow. Verse 13, let's stop right there for a second. Blaming the other person. Blaming the other person. Blaming the other person. Blaming the other person. She had a choice. Adam had a choice. And they both made the wrong choice. Verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because this ha ha thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall uh, bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Upon the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Listen to this. Verse 18, something that wasn't created on the earth until verse 18. Thorns also in thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And that is a proven, proven, absolutely proven fact. And Adam called his wife name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. By the way, look at the skins. S-K-I-N-S. He took two skins of two lambs and made the, each one of them a covering of a separate lamb. Now a lamb or a sheep is one of the most astounding animals to study. Out of all of the animals God made on the earth, the sheep is an animal that cannot maintain itself. The sheep has no mechanism to fight with, has no way to fend off anything. 
The only thing it can do is lay down and roll over, and if the wolf comes, it can run a little bit, but not far, and the wolf will get it, or the lion will get it. And so we know that this God uh, purposed this lamb for a reason when he made it. And he made it so that it would be uh, the sacrificial thing for God to use. He sacrificed the blood of two lambs to make them clothes. That's the first sacrifice in the Bible. We see that right there. And uh, <clears throat> let's see what verse that was in. Uh, and Adam also and his wife did the Lord make coats and skins. Verse 21. That's verse 21. But let's make a note of that and make sure that we don't forget that. And we have Revelation 19 and 8 and Zechariah 3 and 4 to back that up. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims with a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the tree of life to keep the man from eating of the tree of permanent life now that tree of permanent life is going to come uh, alive in the New Testament it's going to be Jesus Christ but here in the Old Testament they had the law but because you and I live on this side of the cross, we look back at the law and use the same Holy Spirit that came on men of old back in that day as the same Spirit that takes us into heaven in this day without the sacrifice, personal sacrifice of animals, of a lamb. We don't have to. The one lamb that was sacrificed for us was the Lamb of God Jesus Christ who was crucified on the cross he was the last sacrificial lamb to be sacrificed <coughs> and you and I get to him by belief by saying Jesus I am a sinner forgive me of my sin come into my heart and save my soul and he'll do that immediately <coughs> and then you need to start get a Bible start reading and asking God to show you you need to find a place to worship and get in that place of uh, worship well our time's come and gone we're going to close up now and uh, start over again we'll see you next time bye bye